Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to what one of my subscribers called a swatch party. Now I really like that, so <laughs> that's what we're going to call this video. I'm going to be swatching all of the different materials from the recent art haul. Um, it was a pretty big art haul, so we've got a lot to get through. So I'm going to start with the coloured pencils and I'm going to be swatching on the Stonehenge white paper that also featured in the art hall. It's a 100% cotton paper, acid free, 250 GSM, um, really nice for coloured pencils apparently, among other things. So I'm going to swatch a little bit on that. Just going to put this pad on the floor. Um, and here we have the Jackson's Studio sketchbook. Now these were these really nice, um, cheap little sketchbooks. Now this tiny one was only 50 pence. Um, they're pretty basic, but it's quite nice thick paper. So I thought we will also try the coloured pencil in those as well. So I'm going to do a swatch on here and a swatch on there. Um, I'm not going to label the swatches as I go along because it's going to take too long. So what I will do is I will, as I swatch, I'm going to tell you what the colour is and what the brand is. So um, I would suggest you perhaps get a notebook and perhaps jot things down if you see something you like. Obviously, you can pause the video as well um, just to make notes or whatever. But this is how we're going to do it because it's just going to take me too long to label everything. Right. So let's start. Let's start with, I think, these pencils here. Um, these ones at the top here are all uh, Caran d'Ache Pablo's. So I'm going to do those separately. Um, we have a variety of different brands here. So I'm going to start with these ones. Um, okay. <laughs> right. I'm in a bit of a funny mood today. I feel kind of, I don't know, um, just a bit strange. It's probably not the right day to be filming a video, but there you go. I couldn't leave this any longer. So let's hope my strangeness goes away. <laughs> Right, let's start with the Caran d'Ache Luminance Silver Grey. So this is a gorgeous colour. How shall I swatch? I wonder whether to do maybe just a swatch where I start firmly and then gradually ease the pressure. So you can see how it looks with bit more pressure applied compared to when you use it very lightly. This colour is actually one that I've had before and I really love so this is a restock rather than a new colour. Okay immediately I can tell you that I like the feel of the pencil more on the Stonehenge paper than in this notebook. It has a really lovely texture. Let me just lift that up for you. Really lovely texture on this paper. And on this one, it sort of feels like it's a bit waxier, like it's sitting on top of the paper, which is kind of not what I like. I mean, maybe some people would like that. I don't know. But um, at the moment, first swatch, I'm preferring this paper. OK, so that's the Caran d'Ache Luminance Silver Grey. Um, I'll just say that again. I'll mention them each a couple of times just so you can make notes. Um, this is the Holbein Artists Coloured Pencil in sax blue this is a new one this is one that a subscriber suggested i get oh it's really lovely it has a nice kind of muted look to it which i like which is probably why they suggested it to me <laughs> yeah that's a really nice blue i can definitely see myself using this one a lot this Stonehenge paper is absolutely lovely for coloured pencils. Okay, let's try it on here. I mean, it's okay. It is just a cheap sketchbook, so... Um, I mean, it's fine if you just want to do sketches, but I'm loving the texture on this. Okay, so I'll say this again. This is the Holbein Artist coloured pencil in Sax Blue. Very nice and looks good with the Luminance Silver Grey as well. I think the next blue we're going to try 
is Light Ultramarine. This is the Faber-Castell Polychromos. There's something a little bit brighter. These blues look really pretty together. I feel like if you try to build up the layers of pencil in the sketchbook, I'll just have a look at it from an angle. I feel like it kind of goes a bit waxy, like I said earlier, whereas this just has a really nice texture. Okay, interesting to see the difference. Right, so I will say this again. This is the Polychromos Light Ultramarine. And so another very pretty blue we have here is the Caran d'Ache Luminance Chrysocola Blue, Chrysocola Blue. I don't know how you say it. Um, but it is super vibrant and gorgeous. And this one actually featured in a video I did um, where I put together a collection of 30, I think it was, Caran d'Ache Luminance colours um, to make like a complete set, a palette of colours that I could keep at my mum's house in Suffolk. Um, and this was one of the colours I chose just because I wanted to have something really vibrant and that would contrast with the other more muted colours I had in that set. I do love how blues look all together. Okay, so that's Chrysocolor Blue Luminance, pronouncing it incorrectly, but perhaps you can tell me how I should pronounce that. <laughs> Right, um, this is Bluish Turquoise. This is the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Oh, this is nice. Oh, that is a gorgeous blue. I think someone suggested this to me. I'm not 100% sure I would have gone for this just by the colour chart online, but this is really nice. has a sort of muted quality to it. So even though it's turquoise, I guess bluish turquoise, just darker and yeah, a little bit more muted. That's gonna be a useful one for me. Okay, so that's bluish turquoise polychromos. Um, we have a couple of other blues here. This one is the Derwent Light Fast Dark Cyan. Oh, wow, this is really quite, looks almost black, doesn't it? Kind of a bit like dark indigo, the luminance pencil, and also a little bit like the midnight black, actually probably more like the midnight black, don't light fast. I wasn't expecting that to look like that, but I always like a really dark, inky, blue so it's good for me yeah very nice okay dark cyan derwent light fast and this is another derwent light fast this is mid blue oh another one perfect for night landscapes look at that Ooh, a nice selection of blues. I don't know whether it's necessary for me to actually keep continuing on with swatching on both of these papers. Now we've tested this, we may just leave this page so we can test um, some of the paints and so on. So I think I'll just switch now. Let's just put that aside for a moment and we'll just do it on this piece of paper. Um, right, Derwent Light Fast Mid Blue, really nice one for night landscapes. That's very much sort of like a night sky colour, like a midnight kind of blue. Right, let's move on to this one. This is Taupe, Derwent Light Fast. Such nice pencils to work with. 
all of these actually. That's a beautiful, soft, slightly violety brown, I guess you would call that. Um, so there you go, taupe. I might actually move on to these earthy colours here. So this is the Luminance Warm Earth 5%. So another lovely natural colour with a slight hint almost of pink to me actually, it's a little bit pinky, beautiful. Sorry, I say beautiful a lot because I have an appreciation of so many different colours. There are very few that I don't think are beautiful. But these are really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so that's a slightly um, pink toned, I don't know what we would call this really. Almost like um, the colour of plaster or something when you first plaster a wall. Really nice, Warm Earth 5% Illuminance. So let's go on to, what shall we do next? Maybe we will go with, I'm gonna go with actually the one that looks slightly more brown, which is the Dermot Light Fast Dark Honey. Gorgeous colours for autumn, these. These are going to come in really useful for the autumn landscapes. This is a new one and I'm glad, well new to me, should I say. I'm glad I went for that because I think that's going to be really useful in my landscapes. Um, there you go, Doe and Light Fast Dark Honey. Sorry if it gets a bit tedious, me repeating these. <laughs> but I want you to know what's what. So this one is Don't Like Fast Dark Orange. I know when I'm watching a swatching video and somebody maybe mentions something once quickly, but they don't label the swatches and then they never mention it again. It's really hard to follow, especially if you see something you like and you want to jot it down so I'm trying to be really clear. These videos are meant to be useful instructional kind of videos. Right so that's dark orange, don't like fast. Lovely autumnal colour palette there. Um, we've got something a little bit brighter now. This is the Luminance Cornelian but even though it's a brighter orange it kind of has a very natural look to it. It's not an unnatural. Summer oranges are really super vivid, aren't they? But this one is actually, it's kind of quite bright, but it's still really natural and I love it. This is a new discovery for me, this Cornelian. And I did actually include it in that um, palette of 30 I mentioned earlier. Just thought it's such a useful colour to have. Also looks fantastic with blues. So that's Cornelian. And this one is Luminance Raw Sienna. It's kind of a little bit like a yellow ochre. I love a more ochre kind of yellow. So I'm not a big user of yellow in general in my... Um, in my work, apart from using it as a mixing colour, I very, very rarely use yellow, like a really bright lemon yellow or something. Um, but something like this is really useful to me. So that's Raw Sienna Luminance. Okay, we're going to move on to these greens. Um, what one should we do first? Maybe this really bright one here. This is the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil Evergreen. It's funny how they called this Evergreen. I mentioned this in the art hall. It just looks like such a bright grass green to me. It's not what I would think of as being Evergreen. 
It's lovely again. It's quite a sort of bright colour, but without being really unnatural. Nice. Oops. Gone over the edge a bit there with that one. I'm trying to do these fairly neatly. That one's gone a little bit. <laughs> it's going to be a bit larger than the others now. That's the Holbein Evergreen. Now we have a couple here I think might be a little bit similar, but it's hard to tell until we actually swatch them. So I'm going to start with this one. This is Chrome Oxide Green Fiery, a polychromos pencil. So a nice, fairly vibrant blue green, if you're after one of those. Actually, the polychromos feel really nice on this paper. Um, so yeah, polychromos, chrome oxide, green, fiery. And another polychromos, this is hooker's green. This is a more yellow toned green, darker, more muted, very nice, useful green, hooker's green. So there you go, um, Polychromos again, just to recap. And this one is the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil in Triton Green. Oh nice, so this is a very blue green. I think a little bit reminiscent of dark sap green um, luminance, which is one of my favourite luminance pencils. I think that that is a bit darker than this one. That's a lovely dark blue green. Really nice. So that is Triton Green Holbein Artists. And then we have this one, Mountain Green, Derwent Light Fast. See what colour they think Mountain Green is. So this is much more of a yellow toned green. nice and dark yeah another really useful one I think for my work and that is mountain green there went light fast and the last one from this batch is lichen green or lichen green however you like to pronounce that um, I think this one's going to be a bit more brown yes it is So if you're looking for a really nice, sort of vaguely green toned brown, sort of earth colour, this could be a good one for you. So lichen or lichen green, don't like fast. I'm going to hold these up before we move on to the other ones so you can have a closer look. These are all Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils. Now these are the less expensive range. The luminance can be really expensive, but if you're starting out using coloured pencils, the Pablo range is a really good one to go for because they're good quality, they have an excellent colour range and they're really nice pencils. So um, the set of 15 I have here are actually the Bonnie Snowden set, except I bought them separately. So you can get on Jackson's a set um, called the Bonnie Snowden Core Collection or something like that. She is an animal artist, so she has picked a colour palette for people who perhaps are into animal portraits. I'm not personally, I do sometimes paint animals or draw animals, but um, generally, I'm a landscape painter or a nature painter, um, but I just loved the colour palette. The colour palette, when I saw it, really inspired me, so that's why I decided to get them. Um, and I already had a couple of the colours, so I had the granite rose and the ash grey. So I didn't want to buy the entire set, 
um, and it was actually, it worked out cheaper for me at the time to buy the pencils separately. So I just bought them open stock. So I've made up my own Bonnie Snowden palette. Um, and these three are just three that I thought would be nice additions to my coloured pencil collection. So we're going to swatch these three first and then I'm going to look at this collection here and just see how beautifully this colour palette works together. So to add to my general collection of pencils, we have Golden Ochre. They feel really nice when you work with these actually. Lovely texture. Quite a lot of pigment actually for a cheaper pencil as well. They're still largely light fast this collection. You have to be a little bit careful because there are I think a few that aren't so light fast but I tried to choose ones that are pretty light fast in general. Um, so that's golden ochre. I think just was that the raw sienna? I think it was wasn't it? from um, the Luminance range. So it's a little bit more yellow than a raw sienna. And then we have, maybe we'll do this one next. This is Bistra. Is that how you say that? Bistra. Um, it's just looked like a really nice dark brown, sort of a greyish brown, which is kind of a useful color. That is actually really nice. I'm liking these pencils more and more. I've only ever had a few because I tend to prefer luminance and the Derwent Light Fast um, or the Faber Castell Polychromos pencils. But these ones are definitely worth a look because they actually compare quite well to the more expensive pencils. So that is a lovely soft dark grey brown and this one is olive black so I'm expecting this I was going to say to be a very dark green but it isn't very dark it's just a really nice natural olivey colour I was expecting it to be a lot darker than that but that is nice so those three will go in with my other coloured pencils and I'm going to keep this set separate because the fact that the colours together inspired me so much, I didn't want to put them in. I'm not going to store them with my other coloured pencils. I'm going to keep them in a jar or something separately so that I make artwork just with this set and they don't get all kind of muddled in with my other pencils. OK, so it's a bit pointless swatching the white. I mean, we could do. Shall we do it? <laughs> Shall I do it just to be um, a completist? Is that a word? We can't see it. No, we can't see it. It really is a pure white. So let's go for the next one along, which I guess would be the cream. So lovely, subtle, buttery cream colour, almost ivory really. I'll hold these up at the end so you can see them a little more clearly. Keep those separate, let's move those ones over there. Right, I'm going to go for Let's do these lovely orangey yellow colours. All right, this one is actually called orangish yellow. That's a very lovely yellow. You see, this is kind of like a yellow ochre kind of colour. Um, so this is kind of the type of yellow I would tend to go for. Let's see how well it looks with the apricot. I 
I think I love the soft look of this colour palette. I think this was what really drew me to it. And I'm looking forward to seeing how I can actually use this in my work. How well it will work for landscapes. Shall we go actually next? Let's do the russet. And see how that looks alongside these. Sometimes I really like ready-made colour palettes. I come up with a lot of my own colour palettes. But occasionally I kind of like that feeling that someone else has chosen them for you. Especially when they're so lovely. Okay, next I'm going to go with the Granite Rose. So this was a colour I already had. But I hadn't really used it that much because, as I say, I tend to use my Caran d'Ache Luminance or Derwent Light Fast Pencils more than any others. This is a lovely soft pink. Sort of a vintage type of pink. Very soft, slightly dusky looking. The next one I'm going to swatch is brownish beige. Let's do that here. There's a slight violet hue, I think, to this one, which is really lovely. Okay, what one should we do next? Maybe... Maybe this one. This is just called beige. Love how all of these are so, look so harmonious together. Um, and then shall we do, yeah, maybe this one next. This is Coco. They're slightly stronger. Looks almost like it's going to be grey on the barrel of the pencil, but actually a really nice brown. And then I think we'll move on now to, let's do the ash grey. So this is the other one that I already had. And it's an interesting colour because it's almost like slightly greenish grey. It's very, very pale. And should we move on to, maybe we will, these really cool bluish greys. Um, so we have a light grey, what's that one? Steel grey, let's try light grey first. So if you're looking for cool toned greys, these could be some good ones to have. So that one's the light grey. And then we have steel grey. It's actually one of my favourite colours within the luminance range, the steel grey. And then mouse grey. Do that over here. Oh, this is a lovely dark one. And this reminds me a little bit of Payne's Grey 60% from Luminance. Another one of my favourite colours. Yeah, nice selection of greys there. And then we have charcoal grey. So this is going to be really lovely and dark. And finally, we have ivory black.
There we go. It looks like I've missed out a space there, but that's the white. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hold these up and they do make a really lovely colour palette. Loving that. Be interesting to see what I can do with those. But I like the sort of limitation of having the colour palette picked out for me and making it work for me. But yeah, if you're after some nice, soft um, nature colours, I guess I would call those, then this could be a nice set for you so that we don't waste the paper. I'm going to turn this over and we'll work on the reverse. I just want to show you these Liquitex acrylic markers from the Art Hall. Um, I've taken the plastic off. I've given them a really good shake. Before you use these, you need to shake them really, really well to mix up the paint properly. Or sometimes it will come out a little bit watery, um, a little bit translucent. So hopefully I've managed to shake them enough. So what you have to do, as you can see, there is like a chisel nib. So it's quite good for a variety of different um, line widths. So what you have to do is you hold it like this and then you just pump gently a few times on the paper. Don't jab it onto the paper because you'll ruin the nib. So just hold it on the paper and gently do that. You can see that the paint is flowing down into the nib now. So I'm going to just, oh, it's a bit scratchy. Let's try and do it a bit more. You can cover quite a large area with these. They do tend to sound a bit scratchy, but you see you can use it like quite broadly there and do a fairly fine line, really. That's a very pretty violet blue. In fact, it is called light blue violet. So that's a new one for me. So that will be nice to work with that. And this one is cobalt blue hue. So we'll do the same with this one. You just have to be a little bit patient. You can see it's starting to run down into the tip there. And just keep going until it's really saturated the tip. Obviously, if you're working on some artwork, you'd be doing this on a spare piece of paper. Well, that's gorgeous. Bright blue. I mean, these are good. I need a little bit more. You have to be a bit patient with them sometimes. But these are good if you want to sort of lay down a big area of colour and then work on top of it. So if you want to work in like neo colour or something on top of this. They can dry a little bit shiny. I don't know whether they are. Actually, they aren't on this paper, but sometimes they do. I have had, I have had them before so that they sort of have a slight sheen to them. Um, so it might be a little bit difficult to work in pencil over the top, depending on your pencil. I really enjoy using them for mixed media work. So, wow, look at the brightness of that. So this one obviously isn't light fast because it's a fluorescent colour. But um, it'd be good for sketchbook work. That's fluorescent pink. Or for any work that is going to be made into prints or something like that. So this one is light pink. Yeah, the fluorescent pink is a bit of a wild card for me, really, because I don't tend to use it a lot in my work, but I thought it might be fun to have. This is much more my kind of pink, usually. If you find that they're a bit scratchy, just pump them again, and sometimes you just haven't sort of got enough um, paint on the nib, so just be a little bit patient with them. They're quite a useful thing to have in your pencil case or your art cart or wherever you want to store these things. <laughs> right, this one is Burnt Sienna. So you can get these in a variety of sizes. As you can see here, I have two of the really jumbo ones. Oh, that's a lovely burnt sienna. 
I always say this, but burnt sienna is one of my must have colors. Very useful, gorgeous red brown. And raw umber is another one that is one of my essential colors. I have a lot of raw rumbers in various mediums. Just a lovely dark brown. So yeah, these are gonna be like an addition to the other Liquitex acrylic markers that I already have. I don't have a lot of them, but I just get them in colors that I think would be good to perhaps work on top of, or maybe in the case of this one, it would be more to add like a little bit of um, a hint of a brighter colour or something like that, or maybe some details. Um, okay, these big ones are a lot of fun. I'm just going to give them another shake just to be on the safe side. I gave them a really good shake earlier. So that's the tip on these ones. It's sort of like, um, it's made of like a foam or something. And these are brilliant if you're working Oh, this doesn't... Oh, that's better. Um, these are brilliant if you're working in like a really big sketchbook and you're wanting to lay down a base colour. Um, this colour, Parchment, by the way, is a really nice neutral colour. It's one of my favourite neutrals. I actually have it in the Liquitex. I think it's their soft body acrylic is it the soft body or the heavy body I can't remember now actually but I have it in their acrylic in the tube look at that sort of a, a really nice green toned I guess you would say a sort of green toned neutral but look how much area I can cover and then that would be a great base to work on top of have the smaller version of this have it in this size as well but I thought it'd be really useful to have the big one okay and this is hooker's green hue permanent that looks pretty well mixed up so I'm not gonna shake that again see it's starting to flow down sometimes you just need to be a little bit patient just don't bash them against the paper just hold it like this and gently and then you'll get there eventually. But yeah, I saw another artist using this colour and I thought what a nice green it was. Really nice, natural dark green, gorgeous. I mean, you can do kind of finer lines with these, but obviously they're a little bit harder to control. But yeah, they're great for laying down large areas of colour and that's probably what I'll use those large ones for. Um, so there we go. Let me hold those up just so you can see a little bit better. And then we're gonna move on to the paints next. going to swatch the vintage watercolours by Wallace Seymour. So I have nine different colours here if you remember from the art hall. So I'm going to be swatching them, I've decided, in the Etcher watercolour pads that Etcher very kindly sent to me to try out. So this one is hot press and this one's cold press. Now normally cold press and hot press paper are quite different. 
So hot press would normally be really smooth and um, without any kind of texture. And cold press is normally quite textured. Well, these two, I don't know whether you can see this very well because we're losing the light in here a bit. But they're not that different to each other. But I thought it might be nice just to quickly swatch um, the watercolours on each one just to see how it behaves because it's the first time I've actually tried this paper. So let's have a little look at these. Um, hopefully you can see both of those, they're both in shot. I think we'll start with the one that was the reason that I actually placed this order in the first place. It's Duguay Green, um, a really lovely dark green. So I think what we'll do, let's just write this down. Um, shall I do, maybe I'll do some of them on this pad and then some of them on this pad. I think that's what we'll do. Okay, let's give this a go. I'm very excited to try these watercolours. I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit. Sorry, can you hear the dishwasher in the background? I might close the door in a minute if that's too noisy. Um, and what should we swatch with? Maybe we will do it with one of my favourite brands of brush. And that's the Pro Art Proline brushes. Oh, wow, look at that. It's very dark. A lot of pigment in there. So I'm not going to do my pebble swatching today. I'm just going to start by kind of using it pretty much in the mass tone. And then, oh gosh, you don't need much of this paint. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'm just going to wash it out so we can really see what this colour looks like when it's diluted. It's a very, very beautiful colour. The person who told me about this colour, as they knew it was the kind of colour I'd like, you were completely right. I'm so glad you told me about it. I don't know what's going on there. Is that a bit of glue? on the sketchbook. Um, it's not kind of taking on that part of the paper, which is a bit odd and a bit annoying. It's a really lovely colour. I love it when it's really dark like this and when you wash it out, it still looks beautiful. Still got that kind of muted, moody, dark look. Really lovely. That's very annoying about that bit there. I think that's actually glue on the paper. Um, and that wouldn't be very good if you were using this to create some artwork. You'd be kind of annoyed if that happened, wouldn't you? So I'm not very impressed with that. And I normally love Etcher products. I'm quite a fan of Etcher, especially their um, everyday sketchbook, the one with the canvas cover that they also gave me to try. Um, but yeah, I use that anyway. And I'll show you actually in a moment some of my other Etcher sketchbook <laughs> that I use a lot. The paper in that is really beautiful. This, um, I'm not so impressed at the moment anyway, but I'm very impressed with this paint. It's really beautiful. I'm just gonna write down Wallace Seymour so you know how to spell it if you want to look them up and perhaps get some yourself. So they're their vintage watercolours. Let me write that down as well. Okay, let's try, um, I think perhaps another green. So let's go for this one. So this is permanent sap green. I'm really impressed with the amount of pigment. They feel like really nice quality paints. Gosh, another beautiful colour, isn't it? Let's see if we have more luck with this swatch. Hopefully there's not another splat of glue. 
sorry, splat's such a horrible word. But that's what it looks like. I feel like really nice quality watercolours. They are lovely. Okay, so let's write that down. What was it? Permanent sap green. And then let's just go for another green. Well, this is kind of a turquoise, really, I think. This is Dufay, so um, named after the artist Raoul Dufay. So this is going to be brighter. Oh, this one, a bit of the binder is coming out first. If that happens, I haven't actually got a cocktail stick here with me, but you can either get a cocktail stick or a needle or something and just put it in the tube and give it a stir. I'm just going to stir it on the palette um, rather than go off and try and find a cocktail stick. But yeah, you can do that if your paint separates like that. That often happens with watercolours, so it's not a problem really. Just give it a good mix. Such a gorgeous, vibrant colour. Even before I've applied it. What a gorgeous trio of greens. So as I said in the art haul video, I actually ordered these from a company in Glasgow called Art Rec. Um, other than choosing keeping and the company I bought them from, I actually don't think I've seen these paints for sale anywhere else. I mean, I'm sure they are available somewhere else, but I like this place because I could buy them individually to make my own colour palette rather than on choosing keeping they sell them in like specific sets so it was kind of nice to be able to choose my own colours gosh it's blowing an absolute gale out there today you may be able to tell, or maybe you can't, <laughs> that the other section of this video I actually filmed the day before. So it's now the next day and I still have a lot of swatching to do for this art haul. I've got the acrylic wash paints, I've got the Derwent paint sets, so I'm basically, gosh the... <laughs> I don't know whether you can hear that. The um, dishwasher is making such a noise in the other room. Um, but yes, I've got a lot of swatching to do. So I'm going to split this into two parts. This is going to be a two-parter video. So I'm going to finish watching these watercolours today. And then I'm going to move on to part two of the video and do all of the other paints. And there are so many of them that I couldn't fit them all in the one video. But it's nice to do it this way because it means we can spend a little bit more time really having a look at things and I'm not under pressure to kind of do it too quickly. Okay, so that was just called Dufay. That is such a stunning colour, isn't it? Let me hold this up so you can have a look. Um, do you see what I mean by this? Oh, whoops, get my sleeve in it. On the paper. Um, I think that's glue because these are gummed all around the outside, these pads. And uh, yeah, that's not very good. I'm not really happy with that. At the moment, I'm not actually finding much to recommend these pads. I mean, I will use them. I'll probably use them for practice or something or swatching. <laughs> but I'm not sure I would use them for actual finished artwork. Um, but as I said, I absolutely love their sketchbooks so I'm surprised that the pads are not such great quality because the sketchbooks really are. Anyway look at those watercolours just really stunning greens there. We call this a green? It's kind of a blue green really isn't it? This pad's the cold press one. This is 100% wood pulp paper whereas their sketchbooks are cotton paper. 
Um, yeah, I'm not super impressed with that at the moment. Okay, let's try the hot press. I'm going to move this out of the way so we've got a bit more space on the desk. Right, I think the next one I'm going to go for is a really pale green. So this is Ingleton Green Earth. And let's just see what this one is like. Beautiful um, grey green as it comes out of the tube. But I think it's not going to be as highly pigmented as the other ones. I wonder whether I ought to change that water. I think I'm going to change the water because look at the colour. <laughs> we need clean water to do this, so I'm going to go and change that. Okay, I'm back with clean water. Let's have a look at this one. Sorry, I don't want to be really negative about these um, watercolour pads. It's just that I want to be honest with you about things. I don't want to recommend things if I don't like them. I'm not just going to say that everything is wonderful when it isn't. I'd rather be honest with you because I want you to like the things I recommend, genuinely like the things I recommend. So most of the time I love the materials I try, but occasionally there are some I'm not that keen on. Gosh, you can really tell that this is an earth pigment because it's much more grainy and it doesn't have that same sort of tinting strength. It's very, very subtle, which is what you can kind of expect from a pigment like this. It's harder to get it to flow as well. I'm trying, but it's a lovely colour. But yeah, it's very, compared to the other ones, it's very, very pale. I like that. This is something I would use as perhaps a base or a background or something like that. Um, and then kind of work on top of it. Okay, which one next? I think we'll go for these. And then we'll do the blue last. Because I kind of feel like these sort of go together. Then we have this rather vibrant blue. So... I'm going to do this one next, I think. Let's get another one of these little dishes. I'm always asked about these dishes, by the way. They're at the Stackable Ceramic Palettes from Jackson's. I have a couple of sets of them because I find them so useful for mixing up different colours. And you can just kind of stack them. I'll show you. So you can just stack them like that so they don't take up much space on the desk, which is quite handy. Okay, so this one is Iron Plum, as a lovely name. Oh, it looks really inky and gorgeous. This feels lovely, this one. Okay, let's see how this looks. Oh, wow. This is definitely my kind of colour. <laughs> It's so beautiful. I can imagine that as a night sky or even if we kind of dilute it a bit more as a stormy sky, stormy clouds. Oh, that is lovely. Yeah, this one's much easier. It's much more flowy than the Ingleton Green Earth. Right, so this is actually, it says on it, this one, it's made from Rudstone and Back Barrow Blue. Gosh, I really like this one. Iron Plum. Um, out of interest, I'm not really noticing a huge difference in the textures of these pads either. So the fact that this one is hot press, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, this one is hot press and the other one was cold press. They feel very similar. So the next one I'm going to try is Torridon Sandstone. This one's separated a little bit as well. So we'll just mix that up on the palette. I'm really loving the Iron Plum. It's going to be interesting to see how that dries. So let's just 
give this a bit of a mix. I think this one is going to be a paler one as well. It's not going to have so much strength here. Oh, it's nice though, isn't it? I think I said one of the pencils reminded me, it was one of the pencils, wasn't it? it? Reminded me of plaster, like when you first plaster a wall. This reminds me of that as well. Very pretty. Sort of pink earth colour. Sorry, these aren't the neatest swatches ever. An unintentional trio of colours that work really well together. I did choose this collection because I kind of felt like they were harmonious. Um, I do feel like the blue is kind of the odd one out in this group, but because it was an indanthrum blue, I really like that colour and I just wanted to get that one anyway. But these look really lovely together. We'll have another look at them when they're completely dry, but really loving those. So the next one we're going to test is Blue John. This comes from the mine in Derbyshire. And I have actually been past this mine. Haven't been in it. <laughs> you could do a tour of it, but I didn't go in there. But uh, yeah, when we were on holiday in the Peak District, I did see it. It's a very pretty colour. Again, I think it's going to be one of the paler ones. What's that one there? They're lovely to use these paints actually. And I'm gonna keep them in the tubes. I'm not gonna put these into pans and let them dry in pans. I'm gonna actually keep them in the tubes because I think the tubes are so cute. I love this vintage look. Okay, so the next one is Theolite. I think this is gonna be super pale. It looks like a really pale pink. Oh, it is. It's like the palest of pinks. These are very pretty colours. Gosh, this one really is very pale. I feel like I need to actually squeeze out a bit more. I might actually squeeze it onto here. We'll work from there. Yeah, you need to use more of this one to get any kind of colour. It's very pretty. See, mineral colours are often really quite pale. They don't have much tinting strength. Lovely, it goes well with the Blue John. Right, now for something completely different. <laughs> We're going to go for the Indanthrum Blue and have a look at that. I suspect we won't need that much of this one. I really love inky blues with um, like these gorgeous soft pink toned paints. Yeah, look at that, the strength of this one, wow. Beautiful colour, gosh. That is so vibrant. Gorgeous. Right, while these are drying, I'm going to go and get my Etcher Everyday Sketchbook and I'm going to show you why I like that one so much and um, why I think the quality is so much better. Alongside the two watercolour pads, Etcher sent this little sketchbook to me and here's how it looks. It's wrapped in plastic but I haven't taken that off because I'm not going to use that one in this video because I have 
very similar sketchbook here. So I was already using this range of sketchbooks when they sent me this one. I haven't ever used a portrait version, so I'm looking forward to using this one because I really do rate these sketchbooks very highly. Um, I'm going to show you inside the one I'm currently using. As you can see, this is a landscape format and I've only done a few um, little drawings, paintings in this one, but um, I've used, for example, on this page here, I've used um, mixed media. So that's, I think, watercolour. Is there a bit of neo colour on there? There's certainly Posca pen, I think, or Molotone marker. As you can see, the pages stay flat. Um, I haven't used them with a lot of water, I don't think. I used, oh, I did with that one. And it did actually stay flat. But the paper is 100% cotton paper and it is just beautiful to work on. It's one of my favourite sketch pads to work in, certainly for watercolour. Um, so yeah, then I did this page. That was when I was working out my additional palette, as I called it, my extra palette um, that goes alongside some others, kind of as a complementary palette. I was working on that. When I was putting that together, I swatched it in here. And that's just testing out. I think that's some of the A Gallo paint. Is that Harbour Blue? I think it might be. Anyway, um, I did a little mixed media landscape there and this watercolour bird and as I say I think I used quite a lot of water on this one and you can see the paper hasn't really buckled so that's pretty good and then here we have my little sand cat <laughs> this is not prompt I was doing with my patrons on patreon and um, this is in acrylic gouache so it's really good, not only for watercolour, but also for acrylic gouache as well um, and mixed media. So there you go. I'll hold the sand cat up so you can have a better look at him. <laughs> I don't usually do animals like that, but I really enjoyed working on that. So, um, yeah, the paper is beautiful. The quality of the sketchbook is really nice. As you can see, it has this um, sort of material canvas cover. Um, has a little pocket in the back as well and yeah really love it I really rate these which is why I'm so disappointed with the watercolour pads that they've brought out but I would recommend that you buy this at the moment I wouldn't recommend you buy the watercolour pads I think there are far better watercolour pads out there but yeah these little sketchbooks are absolutely lovely and they're called the Etcher Everyday Sketchbooks